Back on 2IT Sports, Francis, Rick and Jason discussing a little bit of Arsenal here. The Gunners who, let's be honest, they don't get enough love on our channel. I'm often considered to be an Arsenal hater, which I'm not. I'm just a very realist, realist, realistic, kind of word? realistic, very realistic guy when it comes to world football and very knowledgeable. And I will tell it how it is. And Arsenal for a long time have not been good enough uh, in the Premier League. But again as the way it works with Arsenal is they will often start very well mm. and I will give them the praise that they deserve, but I will also be dubious in how their, well, their, their future is going to pan out. So at the last, moment, last I will heap the praise. Last year, they mid-season, mid they struck form with Olivia Giroud no, but I'm saying, will. It's They're, they're going to hit these points. It doesn't matter whether it's the start, the end, or the middle. It's the consistency that I think they lack, mm. but they have yet to prove that is to be the case this year. So right. we don't know, we can't see ahead. So all we can do is analyze what we've seen. They never signed a star striker until the very last day when they brought in Perez, right? Star striker, as I will put in quotations. I thought they needed to strengthen. But again, what happens is every single year for Arsenal, without doubt, they will latch on to someone. Whether it is a striker or not, whether it's someone just performing well, that's the answer. And that's my problem with Arsenal. And I take the words right out of Roy Keane. Um, when he said in a recent interview is, come back to me five, six, seven months and tell me that Theo Walcott's still scoring at this same rate and I will give him all the credit in the world. I give Theo Walcott credit right now because he's leading the line well, he's scoring goals, they banged in three against Chelsea. Uh, they were phenomenal at times against Chelsea, proven how aesthetically pleasing they can be going forward. Yeah, but isn't he the model of inconsistency? Exactly. Theo Walcott? Very much so. So again, yeah. I don't want to jump ahead and I don't want to play into the stereotype that I hate Arsenal. I want to say they're playing well, they look good, but I will hold my praise for them collectively as a team until we get maybe around December mm -hmm. at a level when I'm like, all right, the consistency's there. They could potentially make so a Does it have anything to do with that Theo Walcott maybe not be, he might not be playing better, he just might not, he is playing differently. Playing in a position that he can thrive a little so bit more. That's what they've been saying. So the, the Telegraph ran an article uh, and they had uh, their his heat map, his touch map, which mm -hmm. when it comes to... Uh, this kind of stuff, this is Francis's bread and butter tactically. It looks like they're using him in a different way. And I'll take a look at this is number 27, element number 27. Um, that's, that's, awesome. that's how much they spent. We'll go to the night. We'll get back to that at some point. But uh, that's last year versus Newcastle, their second match against Newcastle. On the right was most recently wow. the Champions League against FC Basel. Basel, uh, it's, a, it's very different on how they're focusing them on one side. Great on the sandwiches. Field. <laughs> Very delicious on sandwiches. Basil. Yeah, I like basil. I yeah. also like the club a little bit. Oregano, too. Oregano. Yeah. But, uh, so Italian seasoning. Yeah, Rick, so you're a big football fan as well. I we talked a lot of football Who on our channel before we moved over. Who's your do you have one team? anybody. I'm oh. objective overall. Yeah. That's fair. But uh, what is your general thoughts on Arsenal so far this season? What do you I, think? I think they've looked really good. Um, the one problem that I have, as you sort of said, when are they going to hit that roadblock? Because it's due to happen every single year. Mm -hmm. Yet the amazing thing is... It seems like Walcott has played better when Olivier Giroud has not been in the starting 11. Oh, yeah. That's to me personally. I think he's been one of the biggest flops that Arsene Wenger has ever had because he coined him as being a very important piece for them going forward. You mentioned it previously in your preface of the heat maps about how important Giroud was last year. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to be anything important this year. You know who's thriving in the number nine role? Alexis Sanchez. Yeah. Yeah. You know who's really thriving alongside him? Theo Walcott. Walcott. It's okay to not have that big, uh, brute, number nine player. They they had a chance in order to get Kareem Benzema. We've heard that for like four years. I, know, I wanted it to happen, too. I, I like, wanted it to like happen Kareem just Benzema. to see him in the prem overall because mm -hmm. I yeah. think he would succeed in this system that Arsene mm -hmm. Wenger has. But it's okay to go with like a Barcelona-ish system where you're playing attacking midfielders in the striker role just to try and outpace every single team that you go up against. And what do you know? They're winning without Giroud in the way. Yeah, what, what you need to do is you need to go look at the case study of Theo Walcott, right? And look at, at moments where he has thrived and when he's been able to do so, and it's been very sporadic. He will go uh, two goals in a game and then he won't score right. for weeks on end. But this is what this is the, the result of how everyone viewed Theo Walcott as soon as he came on the map. He was quantifiable. Everything that he could do, you could measure in goals and assists. So, as similar what we see with the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, these type of players... Oh, they have one of their team. Mesut Ozil was yeah, quantifiable who all you last expect. season. But as much Mesut Ozil, yes, and, and no, because Mesut Ozil, is, everything's going to run through him. Whether he's right. the what, first assist, okay. second assist, what I think about him is he's always going to be someone that you look to in possession. The team. Exactly. Yeah. So, but with like the, the, the prime example is Ronaldo. I'm not putting Walcott and Ronaldo in the same equation <laughs> to, so you can laugh. <laughs> I'm putting them in there in terms of the way people look at him. Cristiano Ronaldo doesn't score 
in two or three away games, the world freaks out. The guy is he's dipping in form. Whether or yeah. not he's playing well and he's he bringing it up. He set the standard for himself. He set the standard for himself. But it's just the way we look at these type of players. Theo Walcott, whether or not he provides anything off the ball, he maybe makes space. That doesn't matter. And I think that he's been a, he's came under a lot of criticism. Some of it has been merited because he was England's next big thing, taken to competitions the way they like to very early. And he was put into the same mm. light that Rashford was put into mm. and many players are put into. So he kind of was it was always up against himself. But now what you're seeing with Theo Walcott is he is providing the stats that's allowing for those to focus in on him and tell and say that he's playing well because he's scoring goals. And if he, if he wasn't scoring goals, but maybe he was providing for Alexis Sanchez a little bit more so, he would get criticised. Because he, everything that Theo Walcott provides for Arsenal, people will simply measure on stats. Are they going to have a top four finish this year? I think they've got a good chance. I think they've got a good chance at top four. And it's, again, it's, it's not so much because of how well I think they'll play. I still haven't been sold on Liverpool, Manchester United and the other competitive teams to say that they're going to be consistent enough going through the season. I think Tottenham and Everton have just as good a chance at finishing top four as some you of the teams. you believe in Ronald Koeman? I think Ronald Koeman is a... Mastermind at stabilizing wow. ships. Mastermind. Mastermind. Stabil- wow, he is, dude. He is, the, he is quite statement. literally the world's most glamorous plumber. He will fix leaks and he will form it's a like winning. Being the tallest leprechaun. He, he will, yeah, he will form. You're looking at him. He will form a. <laughs> that was harsh. Borderline racist. I'm going to report what? it. I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> I'm not I, the only one, Bart. I know, Bart says that all the time. But I think that he, he forms a winning mentality. Like, this is a guy. Let's just digress a little bit for Ronald Coleman. This is a guy that ha- every year. He comes home with the prom queen and someone steals her just oh. as he's ready to try and That's actually really to work his idea. way up. Because every year he lost vital players in his squad. But he's able to take Everton back after being on the verge of disgrace last season. Roberto Martinez, they leak right. goals left, right and centre, losing the main thing that they, they were good at, which was defending and being hard to beat. Coleman rebuilds him. So I think yeah, yeah, they've got a good chance. Arsenal have got a great chance at finishing top four. I, I'm already sold on the winners of the Premier League. It's already Man City for me. It was at the start of the season. Yeah, I think it's going to be the same. That seems Unless a Glasgow Celtic, Unless Celtic joins. comes into the Premier League and takes some points off of Man City, I will milk that until the very, very last cup. But Comments. Arsenal, they look good at the moment. But let's not put the chicken before the egg. There you go. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Uh, comment below, like, favorite, subscribe to the channel, all the good stuff. We'll be back.